Amtrak's century-old Connecticut River Bridge, one of the biggest choke points on the Northeast Corridor, is finally being replaced. This aging span carries more than 50 trains a day, from high-speed Acela to commuter and freight, but constant breakdowns and speed restrictions have made it a costly headache. Now, backed by $1.3 billion in federal funding, Amtrak is racing to replace it with a sleek, fixed-span bridge built for speed, safety, and reliability. The upgrade is coming sooner than you think, but will it truly fix one of the busiest rail corridors in America and redefine the future of travel along the East Coast? Let's find out in today's episode. All right, before we dive deeper, let's step back a bit and talk about the history and background of this old bridge, Old Connecticut River Bridge. The Connecticut River Bridge is one of those unsung pieces of infrastructure you probably never think about until it fails. Sitting between Old Saybrook and Old Lyme, Connecticut, this bridge is smack in the middle of Amtrak's Northeast Corridor. If you've ever taken the train between Boston and New York, chances are you've crossed it without giving it a second thought. But here's the kicker. That bridge was built back in 1907. Yep, more than 115 years ago. That's like driving a Model T on today's highways. It's technically possible, but far from ideal. Back in its day, the bridge was actually considered a pretty clever piece of engineering. It was built as a movable hoist bridge, meaning it could be raised to let ships pass underneath. At that time, it was cutting edge, but technology doesn't exactly hold up now. The bridge sits only about 18 feet above the river when it's closed, which means it has to open constantly for boat traffic. And here's where the headaches start. Every time it opens or closes, there's a chance something goes wrong. And when it does, it's not just a minor hiccup, it's a full-on disruption. Trains stack up on both sides, Boats sit idle waiting for clearance, and delays ripple down the entire Northeast Corridor. So with all those issues the bridge has been having, it's clear that patching it up just won't cut it anymore. That's why they came up with a brand new design. Before we continue, we'd love your support. This is our new railway channel, and we're aiming for 3,000 subscribers. If you're passionate about rail infrastructure and transit news, make sure to hit subscribe and join the journey. Your support means the world. Thank you. Connecticut River Bridge Replacement Project Instead of patching up an aging bridge, Amtrak is going all in on a completely new structure. The replacement bridge will be a fixed span bridge. It will be built about 50 feet above the river, allowing boats to move freely underneath without trains having to stop. And this won't be a simple swap. The new bridge will have two modern railroad tracks, modern signaling, overhead wires, power, communications, and all the rail infrastructure you'd expect on a modern, high-capacity corridor. It's designed for trains to travel at speeds of up to 70 miles per hour, a huge jump from the current limit of 45 miles per hour. Of course, building something like this isn't cheap. The total cost of replacing the Connecticut River Bridge is about $1.3 billion. A large portion of that is being paid for with federal funds, thanks to an infrastructure bill passed in Washington that has pumped money into similar projects across the country. The Federal Railroad Administration alone has given Amtrak $826 million in grants to spur massive construction. What's more, Amtrak itself is investing its own money, and the state of Connecticut has also pitched in, recognizing the importance of the bridge to both local residents and the national rail network. And none of this happened overnight. Planning for the replacement has been underway for years. Back in 2020, Amtrak received a $65 million federal grant to cover just the initial design, environmental studies, and preparatory work. That investment is essentially starter fuel to ensure all the paperwork, permits, and engineering are in place when the big bucks finally roll in. Now that the plans are set, let's see how far along they are with actually building the new bridge. Current situation. So, as of mid-2025, the Connecticut River Bridge replacement project is in full swing. Phase 1 starts in late summer 2024 and will run until around 2028. Crews have set up temporary approach bridges and trestles, and they're fabricating huge 150-foot steel girders for the new spans. They've drilled 6- and 8-foot shafts into the rock, poured 400-foot retaining walls, and built coffer dams to support the structure. To handle the heavy lifting, two massive Manitowoc crawler cranes, each with a 275-ton capacity and a 160-foot boom, are working off barges in the river. Temporary power and communication systems are also in place to keep things moving. On top of that, they're doing their part for the environment, building new fishing piers at nearby state parks. 
Even with all this action, the team is working super hard to keep trains running without delays along the Northeast Corridor. They're scheduling work carefully so boats can still pass under the bridge without a hitch. The goal? A brand new electrified two-track movable bridge ready between 2028 and 2031, modern, reliable, and built to last. But of course, it's not all smooth sailing. There are some real challenges they're facing along the way. Challenges. Among the most significant are meeting stringent environmental requirements, including the removal of 200 acres of invasive reeds to restore wetlands, protected vegetation in the work area, and compliance with seasonal restrictions on underwater work to protect aquatic ecosystems. The shortage of marine construction barges along the East Coast, combined with recent hurricanes and other emergencies, also presents logistical challenges in scheduling and resource mobilization. Maintaining uninterrupted rail service along this busy corridor requires careful management of monorail failures throughout the construction process to minimize disruptions to passenger and freight operations. Additionally, coordinating construction near an active waterway requires careful planning to ensure safety and maintain navigation. Finally, the aging condition of the existing bridge requires ongoing maintenance to avoid delays while the replacement is underway, adding to the operational complexity of the project. Even with those hurdles, the payoff will be huge. Here's why this new bridge will make a big difference in the long run. Benefits in the future. First, reliability will be greatly improved. The current movable bridge is prone to problems opening and closing its doors, but the new fixed span bridge will eliminate that problem, ensuring thousands of commuters and travelers get to work, school, and appointments on time, improving the quality of life for the entire region. Speed is another major benefit, as trains will be able to travel faster than they do now, meaning time savings for tens of thousands of passengers each day. This will shorten travel times on one of the busiest rail corridors in the country, making rail a more attractive option for both commuters and long-distance travelers. Safety will also be improved, both on land and on water. The new bridge's increased ground clearance will improve navigation by allowing ships to pass without leaning against the bridge reducing the risk of collisions or accidents. For Amtrak and the rail operators, the project will cut down on routine maintenance and emergency repairs, saving millions of dollars in long-term maintenance. Beyond the technical improvements, the new bridge will also provide broader economic and social benefits. It will connect Boston, New York, and the surrounding areas, and promote greater regional trade. Environmentally, Smoother operations will reduce idling and wasted fuel and reduce emissions along the entire corridor. In short, the replacement project will transform an aging bottleneck into a high-performance, future-ready infrastructure that will benefit passengers, freight, boaters, and the entire Northeast Corridor. Thanks for watching. See you next time.